In this video I'm going to be installing new pads, rotors, and braided stainless steel brake lines. I'll also be doing a little cleaning and painting of them as well. You'll need the pads front and rear. These power stop ones also include the pad springs, retainers, and caliper pin boots. You'll need to get new rotors or have your current ones turned. For this install I'm going to be reusing my rear rotors. For brake lines I'm using these ones from Technofit. They're braided stainless steel with a black outer coating. You can also get them in different colors as well. For supplies you want dot three or four brake fluid, some caliper paint if you're going to paint anything, and at least one can of brake clean. You also need some silicone paste to lubricate the caliper pins, and if you live in an area that's prone to rust, some anti-seize is a good idea as well. For special tools, you'll want a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench to loosen the brake hard lines. To compress the front caliper pistons, you'll need a C-clamp, and it's very likely you'll need an impact driver to loosen the screws to hold on the rotors. Get the car in four jack stands and remove all the wheels. These shelves where the hard line and soft line meet are probably going to be covered in dirt or mud. Use a toothbrush and the brake clean to clean them off. And if you have access to compressed air, blow them off as well. You want them to be clean so dirt doesn't fall into your new lines when you go to install them. In the front, you can turn the wheel to the side you're working on for better access. Remove the brake line from the caliper. I'm going to let it hang here and drain a little bit of the old fluid into a cup, but to stop it from continuing to drip, you'll need to clamp it off with something like vice grips. Remove the bolts holding the line to the knuckle and the shock, then just let it hang free for now. Now remove the two bolts holding on the caliper and pull off the caliper. It's still going to have fluid inside, so you're going to be careful and drain it into a cup. Screw the banjo bolt that was holding on the brake line back into the caliper to keep dirt from getting in there. Now remove the old brake pads, and to get the caliper bracket off, there's just two more bolts on the back you'll need to remove. There are two screws that hold on the rotor. You can try to get them off with a screwdriver, but most likely you're going to need the impact driver. Even with the screws removed, the rotor might still be stuck in place, so you can try hitting it with a mallet that normally gets it off. After this, you can do the same procedure to take apart the other side. In the rear, start by removing the handbrake cable. Make sure the handbrake inside the car is fully released before you continue. To disconnect the e-brake cable from the caliper, there's a clip on the bottom you have to pull out with a pick, then you can push the pin out and that'll disconnect it from the arm. There's a second clip further back that needs to be pried off with a screwdriver. That connects the cable to the caliper. After that, you can just pull it out. Disconnect the brake line from the shock. Remove it from the caliper and let it hang like you did with the front. Now remove the caliper, pads, and caliper bracket. The mallet wasn't working on this rotor, so I used a different method to get it off the hub. On the rotor you'll notice there's two unused threaded holes. You can screw bolts into them to push it away from the hub. On the caliper brackets, remove the retainer clips, caliper pins, and the pin boots. Next you'll want to clean the caliper pins and the holes that they slide into. You want to get all the grease out of them. After this, I scrubbed all the parts with brake cleaner and a wire brush, and then I painted all the calipers, caliper brackets, and rotors, Then I let them sit overnight.
Put some silicone paste in the holes on the caliper bracket, then install the rubber boot. After that, lube up the caliper pin and install it. Once installed, it should be able to slide in and out smoothly. Also, the front and rear caliper pins are a little bit different, so don't get them mixed up. Once you get the pins in, install the retainer clips on the caliper brackets. Do this for all four brackets. For the front calipers, use a C-clamp to force the piston all the way in. You'll lose some fluid while you do this, so we'll drain it into a cup. After that, install the pad spring into the caliper. It's the same idea for the rear calipers. The only difference is you have to screw the piston in instead of using a C-clamp to compress it. You can just use a big flat head and screw it in clockwise. Before you reinstall the rotors, you'll want to clean any rust off the surface of the hub. People usually don't think of it, but rust here can cause excessive brake rotor runout. If you're reusing old rotors, you'll want to clean the back of them as well. And even if you don't intend to use anti-seize on anything else, I think you should at least use it on the rotor screws. Install the rear caliper bracket and torque to 28 foot pounds or 39 newton meters. When you install the pads, the one with the metal wire bar goes on the inside. Once they are in, coat the backing plate with the grease that came with them. Install the rear caliper. Before you put the bolts in, you'll want to make sure the caliper pins are aligned correctly. You'll notice the head of the pin has a flat surface on two sides. This will match up with part of the casting on the caliper. This stops the pin from spinning when you try to tighten the bolt. Just make sure both the pins are aligned correctly. Tighten the bolts to 16 foot pounds or 23 newton meters. Finally, reinstall the handbrake cable. The front is pretty much the same. Torque the caliper bracket bolts to 56 foot pounds or 78 newton meters. Torque the caliper bolts to 24 foot pounds or 33 newton meters.
For the brake lines, use the 10mm flare nut wrench to loosen the fitting. Then pull out the clip that holds the line on. Remove the old line, then install the new one before it drips too much. Just run down the fitting till it's snug. Get one of the new bolts and two crush washers that came with the lines ready, then install the line onto the caliper. Just snug it down. Now just route the line like the stock line. You'll need to transfer one of the brackets off the old line onto the new line. Torque the banjo bolt to 24 foot pounds or 33 newton meters. Check that there's no binding when the wheel is turned. Install the clip near the hard line, then hold the new line with a 17 millimeter wrench while you tighten the fitting with a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench. Do the same thing in the rear, only you won't need to transfer anything over from the old line. At this point, double check everything and you should be ready to bleed the brakes. I'll have a video for that in the description. You'll need to check with your brake pad manufacturer to see what the bedding procedure is, but it's important you follow it. I'll have an article about bedding in the description.